Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Coffee Combos Podcast. Hi, Lindsay. Good morning. I feel like I haven't talked to you in forever. It's been definitely been a hot minute. I mean, we've talked, well, I mean, but we, not on podcast, yeah. not on the podcast. Yeah, I mean, we're always texting on our BS every day, but I'm just right. saying, like recording and like catching up and going into details about stuff. Um, I, it just feels brand new, right? So, well, where do we start? Because honestly, this how week was last has, week without it me? Was, it was your first time? <laughs> what? Lindsay, last week kicked my ass so hard that I was truly like, there has to be a rainbow after this horrible storm. Like, there has to be. My, um, let well, me start Before we some- get into that, I'm talking oh about the podcast recording. Like, the podcast recording oh. with Becky was horrible. No, with Becky was great. I mean, you know, she's been highly requested. And I, you know what? I was sad that you weren't there because I really wanted it to be. The first time I had, first of all, I had wanted her to be on the podcast with you in person. And that's why I think that, yeah, even though she was very highly requested, I was putting it off because I wanted us all to be together for it, but it didn't work out that way. So I told her that maybe the next time we record in person, you guys, you can come here and we can record in person because I really want you to meet her. I know. Um, She's a good time. I listened to a little, a little bit of the episode and from what I heard, it was funny, um, and I had posted like all the stuff on the Instagram and everything, and um, obviously everybody loves Becky, and from what I understand, she's turning straight women um, into possible lesbians, so I'm just I like, I think they just question the their sexuality, you know, around her. I don't, yeah. but... <laughs> 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 well, and then... Um, a lot of people were talking about being wedding crashers and then, um, there were some like really funny stories that came through, um, about people who have actually crashed weddings before. And I was just like, what in the actual hell is going on and what am I reading right now? Because I didn't get to listen to the entire episode, but I'm about like 20 minutes in. So I'll keep you updated on what... I think about it, but I just wanted to know like what it was like hosting um, by yourself because you've never done it. I haven't. Well, I did it with Katie Morton for one episode, but Adam oh, right, was there yeah. and I think Susie might have been there for that episode too. So yeah, you're right. That was probably my first time and it was my first time doing like the behind the scenes work for it too. Like we wrote the notes. <laughs> so I was like, I just kept typing and typing and ty- and I was like, okay, this is not, I'm not doing this right so I was Kale like, had a newfound respect for me after I last did week. because I was like, "What the fuck am I really supposed to be typing here? Like, what am uh, I typing?" So I texted Adam and I'm like, "I feel like I'm literally just doing, um, like, you know, when you go to court and you they type every single thing that's said and everything that happens. Yeah. Like, like, I thought I was minutes. doing that. Yeah, I thought I was doing that, and I was like, this isn't this isn't right. So I had to text Adam and be like, "What the fuck do I need to do here?" Um, oh my God. But it was a good episode, so it was fine. Well, I'm so glad. And for all the people that, um, commented under that post saying that, um, they're ready for me to come back. I was ready to come back too, but obviously like my life was a whirlwind last week. Um, actually for like the past two and a half weeks, I guess it's been. Um, so I'm going to let Kale talk about her nonsense of, stuff that went on last week and then we can kind of get like more into that honestly though i think it really it life hit you hard like so fucking hard and then on the tail end of that i got hit in the face with with the baseball bat basically so um (laughs) (laughs) at least that's what it felt like uh i was first leah and i went to the vmas and when we got there we both ended up with strep throat i don't know how we didn't make out um, and then, <laughs> <laughs> so I pick her up from the airport on Sunday. We drive into the city Monday morning. We both wake up and we're like, oh my God, we have strep throat. So then we get, start getting ready. And I sit, mind you, I had no outfit for this fucking event. Um, and sit down in the chair for hair and makeup. And the vet calls me and they had bear since Saturday. So I knew uh, they thought, okay, we'll keep him for a couple nights here, monitor his progress, um, he got really sick on Saturday night. Um, and 
I was like, okay, well, if they're going to keep him regardless, I might as well go to the VMAs because I was um, unsure at first because I didn't know how long they were going to keep him or whatever. And they said they were keeping him regardless. So I was like, okay, well, I might as well go because sitting at home, I'm not going to, it's not going to do anything. So right, uh, I sit down in hair and makeup on Monday. I already have strep throat, still don't have an outfit for this fucking event. And I get a call from the vet and they're like, uh, Bear has a big mass on his spleen, and he also has gastroenteritis. So that is inflammation of the stomach, large and small intestines. And so um, it explains why he's basically had uncontrolled bowel movements for the past week. And I couldn't figure it out. I thought maybe he was mad at me. And I know that sounds so dumb, but if you have a dog, sometimes you think, okay, well, you know, I was really busy this week. I didn't get to take you on as many walks, or I didn't get to, you know, spend as much time with you. So maybe he's or maybe I'm just missing him having to go outside. So I thought, I don't know. If you run your own business and you're used to doing it all, but if you're struggling to get through the to-do list, HoneyBook can help you. I personally am in the process of transitioning from my business pages to use HoneyBook because it just seems like it is more functional and it's more fluid and I'm really excited to start trying it. I'm glad for you to get so organized. Um, (laughs) HoneyBook is an online business management tool that organizes your client communications, bookings, contracts, and invoices, and it's all in one place. HoneyBook makes it simple to run your business better. They have professional templates, e-signatures, and built-in automation. It keeps everything on track and makes you look good. They can even consolidate services that you already use like QuickBooks, Google Suite, Excel, and MailChimp or Gmail. So that's awesome. It's the number one choice for client and business management for freelancers and business owners. You can save time and do more of what you love with HoneyBook. And right now, HoneyBook is offering our listeners 50% off your first year with promo code COFFEE. Payment is flexible, and this promotion applies whether you pay monthly or annually. So go to HoneyBook.com and use promo code COFFEE for 50% off your first year. That's HoneyBook.com, promo code COFFEE. Um, And then, so I'm like, well, she's like, we can do surgery tomorrow morning, but basically that that's not really going to help. Like it's not going to do anything. So, but on the other hand, he can basically collapse at any moment and bleed out. Oh, wow. So I'm just crying and they're filming this. They're filming all of it because they're filming me and Leah in the city together for the VMAs. And I'm like, what the actual fuck? So I'm like, I'm not going to do the surgery if it's not going to benefit him long term. I mean, he's only seven and a half. And they were like, well, we well, can do why ultra- put him through like all right. that trauma for if it's not going to really do anything. So then I'm like, what's another option? They said, we can check with an ultrasound in two weeks. I said, well, if I'm ultimately not going to do the surgery, it doesn't make sense to then do the ultrasound because I mean, at the end of the day, we are talking about money here and I've already spent just to have him in the vet from Saturday until Tuesday, until Monday was 4,400 and then the surgery would be another three to 4,000. And then on top of that, if I was to not do the surgery and then do the ultrasound, it would have been the visit plus the $400 ultrasound. But he would be so uncomfortable and in pain in the, for those two weeks until the ultrasound, if he even made it to the ultrasound. So I came right. home. Go ahead. No, I'm just about to cry. Oh my gosh, don't cry. It was it was rough, but I mean, I guess hindsight, I say this every fucking episode, I swear to God, is always 2020. I looked back and I was like, all these signs that he was showing that I missed and I thought that it was something else, I felt horrible and I already had a vet appointment scheduled for Wednesday at 12 because I wanted to confirm cancer. He, I found a growth on his leg and I was like, okay, I'm something is, something's not right. So I already had this vet appointment, like a regular vet appointment, not a emergency vet. And so I called the vet back and I was just like, this isn't going to be, we have to put him down. Like this isn't going to be to confirm cancer. This is because he has cancer and he's in pain and he's, you know, um, he couldn't get up off the floor on Friday, on Saturday night. That's why we took him. I was at the vet until 3am. Um, and they ended up keeping him, but, um, so long story short, I'm dragged this out as long as I have. Um, we had to put Bear down on Wednesday, last Wednesday. So it's been almost a week um, without him. And it's just been really hard. I've never, that, he was my first dog I ever had. And um, I don't feel like he was here long enough. I mean, I don't think seven and a half years was that long. 
And uh, I basically explained it to the kids. I asked them, you know, did they want to be there? Did they have any questions? And they all said that they, well, two out of three said that they wanted to be there. So I said, okay, I'm not one to sugarcoat things. And I want to explain life to my kid, life and death to my kids in an honest way and, and have an open dialogue about it. And so they were both really upset. And then um, they came they came to the vet and I held bear all the way through it. And Isaac chose to stay in the room all the way up until they started injecting him. Um, so I thought he was really, really brave for that. And um, it was just, it was difficult. It was really, really difficult. So that's where we're at. Um, after that, I was hospitalized. They thought I had fucking meningitis, um, but it turned out to well, be- Wait a minute. First of all, literally that breaks my heart. Mm-hmm. It was, I, Lindsay- I was making like the worst, the weirdest noises, ugly crying so fucking hard. Like it was, I don't think that I, anyone could have prepared me for, and they even asked me, they're like, are you sure you want to be in the room for this? And I was like, this is my dog. Like, this is my child. This is my- I'm not going to let him do it by himself. I could, I didn't understand why they would ask me, did I want to be in the room? Of course I wanted to be in the room. But then when it was happening, I was like, oh my God. And I couldn't stop. I'm going to cry. Um, I couldn't stop apologizing to him because I felt like I missed the signs, you know? And I, um, I feel like he was in pain for a lot longer than I knew. And, um, I just didn't. Like, because he's a dog, I mean, I just didn't think that it would impact me the way that it, the way that it did. And then like coming home and, you know, Bear was my eyes and ears when I was asleep. You know, I live by myself most of the time. So, um, he, he always barked if there was anything, even a shadow. And I, as sometimes as frustrating as it would be, like if the baby was sleeping or something, it would, he protected us, you know? So it's, it's been really weird. And the last night, before we put him down, I knew that we were putting him down the next day at 12 o'clock. So I let him sleep in my bed, which I don't ever do. And I let him sleep in my bed and I didn't sleep the whole night. Like I pretty much tossed and turned all night and just like knew what was coming. And, um, but we, you know, here we are a week, almost a week later. And I try to sound, I'm so matter of fact about it because it's, it is what it is at this point. But I mean, it's sad. I didn't think I would, I don't know. I guess I didn't know what to expect because I've ne- never gone through this before. So um, it's been hard, but you know. Well, I've- and <clears throat> I think it's hard too because he's been through so much with you, like since Isaac's been a baby. So yeah. I think, you know, like you look back on all of your memories and he's mm-hmm. a part of like all of your memories. So it really is like but you know a what's- part of your life that's not there. It's so crazy though, because we moved into the house about a month ago and right before we moved into this house, I had bought Bear all new stuff, Bear and Gizmo. I bought them both all new stuff, new leashes, new dog bowls, new crates, new beds, new everything. Um, And so, and it was so weird because when I was putting, Chris helped me put the crate together. And they come with like the big ones for the big, big dogs. They come with a divider. So like when you're crate training your puppies, they, you know, you change the divider as you go. And I, I don't know why, but I told Chris, I said, don't throw the divider away and put it in the box and keep the box. I don't know why I said that. And I always said, you know, when bear goes, I'm not getting another dog. I'm not doing it because, uh, you know, it's just, it's a lot. And I, and I don't think that I could attach myself to another animal the way I did to bear, but something told me to keep the divider, keep the box, keep everything. And it was, it's almost like the universe was like preparing you. Yes. Like preparing me like, okay, you say you're not going to get another dog, but eventually you will. And this is like bears breaking in all the new stuff to then patch, pass the torch. You know what I mean? So that when I get another one, you know, everything's pretty, it's a little bit, it's like broken in just enough, you know? So, um, I don't know why I feel... I feel like that's that's what I needed. I didn't sleep the night that you went to the vet because I kept like waking up like sporadically like texting you. I felt like I was like some type of like psycho in the night, you know, like I would like <laughs> fall asleep and then I would like yeah. catch myself falling asleep and I would wake up and I would be like text Kale like is everything fine? Like what's going on? Um but I'm proud of you. It's 
that's a hard thing to go through and I haven't been yeah. through it. So I can't speak on it, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that are listening who have been through it um, and probably share similar experiences with you. And I'm proud mm-hmm. that you let your kids be involved because I'm so weird. We talked about it on the podcast with Brittany that I'm really weird about death and mm-hmm. like permanent things in right. life. And yeah. um, I don't do funerals myself and I just, I don't do death well. So I, truly, I always I think shelter was- Jackson from it, you know? Yeah, and I think it it is a very weird thing to talk about, and I feel like unless you are directly affected by it, like how do you even open that convers like how do you even open the doors for that conversation? So I felt like, and I, I was getting different opinions from people. Like some people were like, oh, you know, tell the dog that he, tell tell them that the dog's going to heaven, and then another friend was like, you know, be open and honest with with them. You know, they're whether uh, some people believe in heaven, some people don't. Um, but I wanted to be as honest as I could in, in what I believe. And I know that maybe my kids' dads don't believe the same thing, but I explained it to them from my point of view. And I asked them, did they have any questions? And they kind of said, no, like they knew, you know, I basically said that they're going to, they're going to make this, this shot. And when you are in pain and suffering, um, when the dog is in pain and suffering or any animal, you know, they, they inject them and it kind of just, it puts them out and, and they die and, and then they become part of the universe and that's, and that's what it is. And they don't come back after that, you know, but we have the memories and they didn't have any questions. Like they didn't ask me anything. And I was almost like, do they not care or is it they understand or I don't, I didn't really know. But I didn't want to press I mean, it because if they're not asking questions, I didn't want to, you know what I mean? Well, I think you have to kind of like take it in stride and like when they ask questions and right. like when the questions come, that's when yeah. you answer them. Um, sure. But obviously like that's a very hard thing to go through. And I know we talked about Della being sick on the podcast before, but it was nothing like life-threatening. But honestly, like in my head, I went through the state of how would I explain this? Like if something goes like south really fast, like how, right. how do you explain, do I it? explain it? So I'm so glad that um, you were able to share and I don't want you to cry the whole podcast so we can talk no, about No, 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 I'm else. good. I'm good. I just really quickly to touch on that. I, the one thing that I was afraid that they were going to ask me is, do they do this to people? Right. Yeah. So that was something that I was like, oh, okay. I was hoping they didn't ask because then I'd have to explain it the right way. I'd have to explain it like literally. Um, but anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, we don't have to be sad the whole podcast and I, there's a ton of like good stuff and other stuff that you're going through that we should talk about. And, but that was my experience with bear and stuff like that. Well, we're praying for you. Thank um, you. For the people who pray, I'm sure Thank they you. are praying. Cause I saw a lot of people like sending messages and, um, comments and stuff. So we love you. Um, but we can move on so that you don't have to um, cry. Be for sad. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. I want to take a quick second about finding products that you trust. I personally feel like there are new body care products that are launching every single day that we're exposed to. And because you have so many choices, your best bet is to look for products that have been vetted by experts. And that is when I ran across Flamingo and I... I'm obsessed. They're tested and trustworthy and I'm just so happy about it. So for those of you who don't know about Flamingo, they make body care for women with hair, great razor, shave gel, and body lotion, the works. They were started by a group of women at Harry's, a men's shaving brand who realized they were only using men's razors because there wasn't an option that felt right for them. And I can totally relate because I used men's razors before Flamingo as well. Hair removal can be such a chore and that's okay because the Flamingo Shave Set is anything but routine. It's a $22 value, but for you, it's $16 with free shipping. I personally love it because it comes with a little pouch and it has all of the essentials that I need inside the pouch. And because of my travel, I just throw everything in there and never forget anything. So think about it. You probably spend more than $16 on razors and blades already. 
with the Flamingo Shave Set, you can upgrade for less or the same as you're paying now, including the parts that you skimp on like shave gel and exfoliating lotion. And they even send you a shower holder, which is my favorite. Flamingo Shave Set features the award-winning products for just $16 and it ships free directly to your door. If I were you, I'd try the Flamingo Shave Set. It's a $22 value for just $16 with free shipping today when you visit shopflamingo.com slash coffee. That's right. Visit shopflamingo.com slash coffee. Um, so tell me about the VMAs. Um, we didn't have outfits. Uh, we waited until last minute. And when we were there, we missed Missy Elliott's performance and we had strep throat. So as far as I'm concerned, I had no business being there. Absolutely not. No, like, I shouldn't have even shown up to be perfectly honest with you. Like I saw I, that you like posted <laughs> something about how we wore bras. Yeah, or like how you had like a fashion mishap or like something I forget yeah, like the way that for you like sure put did. it. We did. We definitely um But like what happened? Like was it like one of those moments where you were like we look really cute like in the moment and then you looked at yourself in professional photos and you're like, what the fuck was I doing? Like, it would have been good if we were going to a club or something. And the pictures made me look like I had a grandma heel on, like the one inch heel, you know? And they oh, were like God. really, they were really like four inches or five inches. So I was like, wow, this is not mm-hmm. good. I call those chodes. I'm like, I can't wear them. <laughs> they looked like grandma ones. And I was like, that is terrible. Honestly, though, it was if Leah and I can look at ourselves and laugh, like people were comparing me to that, um, who was the girl that played, um, in a Cinderella story, the mom, the stepmom, uh, uh, <laughs> put oh me in a side by side with her. And I was like, wow, she could literally be my mom. Um, oh, and I was just like, oh my God, you know what? We were going to, we are going to redeem, redeem ourselves. So much for the next award show so i am not worried and honestly it was just like a joke like here we are we have strep throat we showed up to the vmas and bras like fuck it what else can go wrong like i don't even for everybody listening kill like when she was in atlanta last time she was like want to go to the vmas and i'm thinking to myself like i'm the type of person that i have to have like the perfect outfit like i would have to have like tailoring and like everything like you know done Right. Kill is the type of person that doesn't know what the fuck she's wearing until like three minutes before she shows up. Correct. And so that's terrifying to me. And it's also terrifying to me that I could possibly be put on some type of like in some type of magazine of like worst dress. Worst dress, like which was me. That's mortifying to me. So absolutely not. To be perfectly honest, I'm glad it was you and Leah because y'all can take that in stride and I can't. So... <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was pretty bad, but at least we were comfortable while we were sick, you know? A hundred percent. So um, then, should we tell everybody about how I almost called 911 to your house? Yeah, I think we should because that was a shit show <laughs> also. This is all one okay. week, by the way. This is literally all in one week. Yeah, this is like between a six and seven day like time period, you guys. This isn't like just things that have happened in life um, no. collectively over like the past couple of months. This is literally within like six days. So <laughs> I was texting Kale and normally like I know her patterns and I know like when she's going to text back or if she's like <laughs> asleep or whatever. So I've texted her like a million things and she hasn't responded and I'm like, okay, something's not right. And then I tagged her in something on Instagram and that bitch is always checking Instagram. So I'm like, she hasn't seen it yet. So like, obviously she hasn't been on Instagram or else she would have looked. And then I go on Twitter and like, no, haven't tweeted anything stupid. So I'm like, (laughs) like, where is she? So then at this point, like normally I would not contact Kale's assistant to like aggravate her with something unless it was like super serious. So at this point, like I'm at an appointment, it's like around 1130. I was about to say, it's probably late because I get up super early. Yeah. And I'm like, she's not still sleeping. Like she's dead. Yeah. No, I basically was. I text 
your assistant, Kristen, and I'm like, Kristen, something's wrong. Like, where is Kale? All of a sudden, Kristen texts me back, like, on speed. And she's like, 20 minutes from her house, going as fast as I can. And I'm like, I knew something was wrong. I was like, that's it. I'm calling 911. And she was like, let me call her and like, see if she answers the phone. So then Kristen texts me back and she's like, I told Kale that you've literally, she's literally freaked you the fuck out. And she says that like, she can't see and she has like pain down her spine. And I I start like acting like I'm a physician at this point. And I'm like... (laughs) Oh my God. She has Meningitis. gotten strep in her spine and like she's, she's dying. Does it go in your spine? I don't know. Like I've made this up. Like I oh literally thought you were dying. God. No, I was. Lindsay, I was in so much fucking pain. I was in so much pain all night long. I have this, it literally, I had every single fucking symptom of meningitis and I knew that I had had mono pretty recently, like in the last couple months. And then also I had strep and then I had this like migraine that literally, when I tell you, like, I'm not exaggerating. I know I can be dramatic. I know. But this time, like Chris had come and he had taken the kids and he took them to his aunt's house. And it was so bad that I truly was like, there's swelling in my brain. There's something wrong. Like, there was so much pain and I couldn't, I like couldn't hear sounds. Any sounds made me like literally just like want to cringe and I just wanted to cry and it was so, so bad. And then I started feeling it all down my spine and into my lower back. And I was like, I have meningitis. Like I for sure do. So Kristen actually showed up here and came and she has a key to my house. So she came in and she's like, Kale. And I'm still in bed at like one thirty in the afternoon. Like I could not get out of bed. It was so bad. She took me to the hospital and everything. No, I was like, Kristen, speed up as fast as you can. I'm like, I don't <laughs> I need give you to go a 100. Shit, if you're 20 minutes away, you're about to be three minutes away. Like, speed up. <laughs> and also, um, if I had 9 1 dialed on my phone, so I was just about to click the other one and call and be like, um, we need a wellness check on this person at such and such address. Because she has not looked at her Instagram or her Twitter, or she <laughs> has not texted. Say that. Could you imagine? Like, what oh would God. I have said? They would like, find they you. Been they like, would be like, they would be like, we cannot do. Like, you're abusing this line for an Instagram wellness check. Yeah, like I was so concerned, and then finally, when Kristen texted me back and was like, "They're you know doing these tests," and then Kristen and I are texting back and forth about like how they might possibly do a spinal tap on you, but we weren't going to tell you. And like, Oh my God, she told me that. And when she told me that, I was like, no, I'll, re- I'll refuse. I will refuse the spinal tap. No. We were like, Kristen was like, but I'm not going to tell her. And I was like, yeah, good idea. Like, don't tell her. Like, I felt like such a bad person, like coming up with all of these things, like behind your back and like diagnosing you. No, um, but I, I went down the rabbit hole too. Like I, the first thing everyone said was meningitis. So I was like, oh my God. So I'm down this rabbit hole on Google, like WebMD. And I'm like self Yes. Like I'm self-diagnosing myself and here they're telling me that this is just possibly a migraine. And I'm like, okay, first of all, I'm, if this is a migraine and people get these regularly, I don't know how people are functioning and doing life when I literally didn't get out of bed for over 24 hours and I could not function. Like my kids, eat, I had to give Lux a bath the night before and I was giving him a bath and hearing the water running, I literally wanted to die. First of all, I will tell you, I felt, remember how we were texting yesterday and you were like, I don't want to go to the ER and these people think that. I'm coming here for a headache. Yes, that's what exactly what I thought. Okay. That's exactly what I said to them. Imagine how many things you can do in the time that it takes to go to the grocery store and like sit in the parking lot and like actually mentally prepare yourself to go in the store because that's me every time I have to go to an actual <laughs> store. But anyway, what would you do with all that time? So as a mom, I love taking as much time as I can with my kids. So every minute counts and I'm probably late to everything. So that's why we love Instacart. I use Instacart now because it's just like the grocery store is so busy. They never have enough people on the register. It adds time to something that you think is going to take 20 minutes. 
So it's just like super convenient to go online, get all your stuff and have it delivered right to your house. And I always feel like when you do use Instacart, I'm more prepared for some reason. So like my list, I get exactly the things that I need for like the recipes that I'm making for the week instead of going to the grocery store and like throwing stuff in the car that we absolutely don't need. So or like forgetting stuff because you're distracted. Yeah. So I mean, I just, yeah. I love it. So with Instacart, mm-hmm. your groceries can be delivered in as fast as one hour. I love that I can get my groceries delivered from my favorite local and national retailers without the hassle of sitting in traffic. And all I do is just go on the app, shop for the groceries I need from my favorite stores from the comfort of my couch. So you can try Instacart and get $10 off your first order, but to get this limited time offer, go to instacart.com or download the mobile app and enter our promo code COFFEE at checkout. That's $10 off your first order today at instacart.com or through the mobile app, and don't forget to enter our code COFFEE, instacart.com or through the mobile app with our code COFFEE at checkout. So a couple of years ago, um, I think Jackson was like... two, he might've been three. Um, I'm pretty sure he was two though, but I felt like I had a migraine for like weeks at a time and I wouldn't be able to see. And at the time I was going to the chiropractor a lot and I know there's like mixed reviews. Some people love the chiropractor. Some people hate the chiropractor. Um, but I was going cause I had been in a car accident. And so somebody had rear-ended me and I had whiplash and it was just, very bad situation. You never told so, me this. I did not know that. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I was actually on the way to um, the airport to go to Nashville to film, and the driver had picked me up from the house. We were sitting on the freeway at like five o'clock in the morning, and some truck that was carrying like heavy duty equipment on it never stopped, and they just plowed into the back of us. So, oh my God. My Chick-fil-A Coke went fucking everywhere, like all over me. (laughs) I mean, it was, it it was a disaster. (laughs) Like my Louis Vuitton was ruined. It had like Chick-fil-A Coke all over it. Um, It was literally a disaster. So basically like I go to the chiropractor, um, they tell me my back is all twisted up. And so I start getting these adjustments and then I start getting these, what I thought were migraines, which I think they were migraines. Um, but I wouldn't be able to see. And like, I wouldn't want to tell anybody because I felt like a psycho. Like I thought I was making it up. Or they won't take you seriously. Yeah. So like, I wouldn't even tell Will. Right. And so I would be looking Same. like probably all cross-eyed, like not being able to see, but trying to like still do life, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. So I finally, one night was just like, this is it. Like I'm dying. And so I went to the ER and I told him like what was going on immediately when I told him that I had been seeing a chiropractor, they start doing CT scans. They start doing like all of this stuff. So, um, wait, why? Well, I've never been, I've never been to a chiropractor, so I don't know. I think because like medical doctors like don't think like chiropractic is like medical or something like that. So they say like, don't do it, but I love going to the chiropractor. I'm going to be honest. So, um, anyway, they start doing all these scans and then come back in and you know, it's like the worst ever when they come back in and they give you like a referral to a specialist, like, yeah, Mm -hmm. that's the worst. So they come back in and give me a referral to a neurologist. They did like, the same thing to me. They gave me Toradol, um, Compazine, Benadryl, and then sent me. They gave me a referral to a, a a neurologist. And I'm just like, I. First of all, I was already skeptical that anyone was uh, like around me would believe me, but luckily Chris believed me. Like this, he truly did, and he was trying to get me to go to the ER all night. But I don't, I just don't think that they would have done anything. Like, and they didn't. They gave me three drugs that I don't even know what they do. I had to look them up, and they're not even for migraines. Like they're like for other things that I guess also can like help with a migraine. So I'm like. I'm not going to a neurologist. Like, I'm not doing that. I want to know what is the cause. Why did this happen to me? And is it going to happen again? Well, I guess the neurologist would tell me that. 
Yeah. So <laughs> I was literally so freaked out whenever they came back in and were like, they basically just tell you that they're kind of like done with you and like you have to go to like this specialist. And then did anything come up who, on your scan? Yeah. So for anybody who has ever been to the ER for something like this, um, make sure you send us a message if you've ever been through this because literally when they send you to a specialist or that's the recommendation, they pretty much like don't do anything else. So it's like, that's where like their service basically stops. And so then you have to, this was like over a weekend for me. So I had to sit on this for a weekend and then call the specialist. And it was like two weeks before I could get into a specialist. Um, They actually had ordered an MRI for me. So then I had to go and have an MRI, which is really scary. Um, And then the MRI place sent the results to the specialist and I had to go for the specialist to read it. And so I forget what it was called. um, But whenever I was born, um, unless you have had an MRI, like you wouldn't know that you had this, but sometimes like when you're developing, um, spinal fluid can like get on your brain. And at the very bottom of my brain, there is like a little bit of spinal fluid. So I don't know if that could have been affected like when I was having these adjustments um, or not. And the neurologist said that they really don't know. Like it's not like life-threatening. It's not something like it's something I've lived with for my whole life. Like literally since I was developing, like I've always had it. So it was nothing new. Um, But it was kind of scary to know that, like, I had had something that was, like, a little abnormal. Right. Because you don't know what to expect. Right. Yeah. But I would be... I think you definitely should go to the neurologist. Okay. Well, I mean, I definitely will. I think I threw out the referral, but I'll definitely call back and just... Oh, (laughs) lovely. Of course you did. Um, Of course you did. I can just call back and just ask, say, you know, can I have it? But I just... I don't, I still have the spine pain. Like even right now, as I'm speaking, I don't know where the back pain is coming from. Yeah. That's like freakish, but I will tell you, you do live like a very crazy life. So I think that maybe like, I'm not going to try to act like I know how to diagnose something, but you know how I was saying yesterday, like we had a chill day, like took Jackson to sky zone, literally had dinner, a bath and was watching TV by like 5 30 in the afternoon. So like that's more like borderline grandma. So I think if you like tried to scale back a little bit, like did a little bit less stuff in the amount of time that you do things in, then you might like feel better. Cause I sometimes feel like you can bring sickness on. Yeah. Cause you're, you get like overwhelmed, but that's just honestly a personal opinion. And I don't know if there's like really any truth. No, to that, I do. But- I agree because you know what's really weird and maybe it's just a coincidence, but also maybe not. Um, Anytime I'm not a person that functions well off a little sleep, but lately I've noticed like I've had strep throat three times in the past six months and every single time it's after a long weekend of no sleep. Yeah. I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but it's like running myself so thin or like just not, you know what I mean? And then I get sick, whether it's it could be anything. Like even now I feel like I'm like stuffy, my post nasal drip ill and, um, I haven't been sleeping. So it's like, I don't know. I'm not sure, but the back pain's a little weird. I don't know. I've never really had like severe back pain. Okay. So Lindsay, you know what I love using lately? What? I love using Noom because I feel like this move has helped me transition into like making lifestyle changes everywhere. And Noom helps me like get in shape, but also just like do better to do better habits and like just keeping track of my body. And I love it. I think it's, it's been really awesome to use in this last couple months. Maybe that's why you've been in a better mood. Honestly, like I'm glowing, I'm radiating. I, I think it's Noom. <laughs> I love it. So um, y'all, if you have specific goals that you want to achieve, um, you can do that with Noom and it's not just losing weight. So you know, better self-care, feeling confident in clothing, um, have more energy or just, you know, like an overall glow. Or if you want to make healthy choices, um, 
that deals with your self-worth, have, you know, better mood, control stress and anxiety. Noom is so great. So Noom can help you break habits. And I think that kind of goes back to what Kale was saying and help, you know, create better ones. So it's just super easy and convenient use of the app. So Noom is a habit-changing solution that helps users learn to develop a new relationship with food through personalized courses. So that's why it's different from everything else that you've tried to use in order to kind of keep track of your weight or like stay on track or any of that kind of stuff. So they say it's based on a cognitive behavioral approach, and I think it works. So you guys don't have to change all your habits in one day. You can make small steps to make big progress. And in order to do this, you have to sign up for your trial at Noom, which is N-O-O-M dot com slash coffee. What do you have to lose? Visit Noom dot com slash coffee to start your trial today. That's Noom dot com slash coffee, the last weight loss program you'll ever need. We've just been on the struggle bus for like the past at least two and a half weeks Kill probably for like the past 20 something years, but I've been, <laughs> I've been on the struggle bus. Like I boarded it two and a half weeks ago and I haven't gotten off yet. And I don't, honestly, I don't coming. even know how you're holding up because I feel like you got hit so hard with so many things and so publicly, honestly. You want to talk about it? Like what? It's what up questions to you. you you're, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm not pressuring you to talk about anything you don't want to, but let it be known that I truly don't know how you're still doing it. Ask um, me whatever you want. And if I can't answer it, then I can't. But if I can, then then I will because I want to be honest. Okay. I mean, so what where you do got? we start? I mean, I guess as all of us know, we've seen the media and we saw that your parents were getting indicted for 12 or so counts of I don't need tax evasion, criminal activity. I don't even know. Yes. So um, like two and a half weeks ago, that all went down. And before I even get started, I just want to say thank you to every person that has sent me a message, whether it be good or bad, because I'm not the type of person, and I've talked to Kale about this before, like I don't really block people. Um all opinions are welcome. If you want to try to hurt my feelings, that's fine. Um, I'll probably read it, feel a bit indifferent, and then move on about my life. Um, it's okay. Um, I get it. Like there's more than just like one person's opinion, and it's always not you know the same opinion that I share. So I'm okay with that. Um, I've received mean messages. I've received nice messages. And that was, you know, expected. Um, I will say that, um, as far as my parents' legal things, I'm not really going to get into that. Um, other than the fact that it had been reported, um, through my biological brother, Kyle, um, that I had something to do with it. And without going into bashing any specific individuals. Um, I know what I've done and what I haven't done. And I have no problem owning things that I have or haven't done. However, I will not own something that I didn't do um, for the sake of media to take the heat, to do, you know, like whatever the agenda was, like, I'm not going to take on responsibility that doesn't belong to me. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have to. um, I had nothing to do with my parents' federal indictment. Um, To be perfectly honest, the years that were covered in the indictment, um, most of those years, I was not in communication with my parents. So a lot of the years from like early on um, that they covered, I was in college. So I wasn't even like living at home. Um, and through college, I don't know if I've shared, you know, my whole story or not, but through college, I didn't talk to my parents. So I definitely like would have had no knowledge of anything. And then in 
the later years um, that were covered, I believe that I was like already leaving the show. So I also wouldn't have had any knowledge of like some of that stuff either. So I just find it a little ironic that there is some blame game things going on. Um, and I just really had no involvement in that. But then um, after that whole whirlwind came out and um, literally my TVs had to be off in my house for, they're still off because I'm terrified of like what's going to be put on there next. We have little eyes and ears around here, you know, so you can't be having things right. blasted that he could potentially, like he's he's smart, you know, so he will pick up on those things. Right. Um. So immediately... I realized that this was going to be a media circus. So I contact my attorney and ask if it's okay if I put his um, email on my Instagram because I didn't want to be answering any of these questions, especially like questions for things that I didn't have anything to do with. So um, then he gets a call or email or something like that from TMZ stating that they had obtained a police report from my county and would I like to make a comment on it. So he calls me and tells me that I need to come into the office um, because, you know, this is the information that he's received. So I go to his office and realize that the next whatever foreseeable future is going to be hell because um, – Now this police report is out there and then the next thing I know, um, my dad's out making statements that I had had extramarital affairs with two people and then actually gives names of people. So just to cover up to that point, I have been on the receiving end of all of this and for any person that is... I have tons of people that are supporting me over all platforms, but you do get some bad messages and those sting a little bit more than the good ones. You know, you could get like a million good ones and then like one bad one. But for people to expect that I'm not going to stand up for myself, um, that I'm not going to speak my truth, that I'm not going to come with the facts. I don't really know what to say because I'm not just going to allow somebody to go out there and do that and then not respond. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think and I that... Don't even, oh, go ahead. I don't even know why that would be a logical thought. Okay, guys, so let me tell you about this great new bra I found from Third Love. Third Love makes amazing, perfect-fitting bras designed with breast size and shape in mind. I am a 36 triple D, and it's been super difficult for me to find a bra that works for me, holds the girls up, and doesn't slip off my shoulders. Third Love has an awesome 60-second Fit Finder quiz. Over 12 million women have taken the quiz, and it makes the process of finding the right fit easy. You also have 60 days to wear it, wash it, and put it to the test. And if you don't love it, you can return it, and Third Love will wash and donate to a woman in need. This is hands down the most comfortable bra you'll own. Third Love knows that there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now, they're offering our listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash coffee now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash coffee for 15% off today. Um, I think that people think that they know you guys and they think that you guys are almost like characters. I'm not really sure how to put it. Um, And so they feel like they're entitled to give an opinion where they don't necessarily need to or that it, you know, concerns them. I'm not really sure how anyone, whether they love your family and the show or not, I don't know how they can look at the situation and send you a bad message. Um, Because at the end of the day, which, you know, I stand behind you 110%. Um, even if it was you that did it, which I know it's not, that 
turn them in, it's like they're the ones that committed the act in the first place. So how would, I don't understand that mentality or for example, for the extramarital affairs, like, I mean, did they look into every little detail of your marriage and decide that you weren't separated or that you actually did these things? Like they don't even know if there's actual, do you know what I'm saying? Like the whole situation is so crazy to me. Well, it is very crazy because, you know, then you go down the rabbit hole of he's gone out here and made these statements uh, to the media himself quoted and start giving dates. Well, that was not the smartest thing to do because (laughs) if anybody knows me, you they keep know receipts. that I keep records. Yep. I know that. So <laughs> I got fact. The, I got the receipts and I'm going to pull them out if I have to. So yep. um, I started pulling out receipts last week on Twitter um, of tweets that had happened in 2017, which is kind of like where it all started and when when I had left the show. Um And, you know, to be perfectly honest, to make it short, I just really don't appreciate it. I don't think that the statements that were made were in good taste. Um, And people have to understand, like, what led me to this point. I also um, was sent screenshots of comments and photos um, from Chase's Instagram page where he had intentionally cropped me out of photos. And then the caption was like family or, you know, something like that, which is good and great. Like that's fine if that's how you feel, but also be mature enough to realize that since I left the show, I have not gone and aired any dirty Dirty laundry laundry. at all. And you very well could have, you could have you could have literally put anybody on blast and you never did. So like the vague tweets, the taunting tweets, the the low blows of cropping you out of family photos, like childish. And, and it really speaks more about them. It Unfortunately, it does speak volumes about character. And, um, you know, then I was sent a screenshot of a comment that was made under the photo that I was cropped out of that stated that he only had one sister and that was Savannah. So, you know, obviously people were going on there and there was very mixed reviews. You know, there was some people on there saying like, you're bad or like, you know, you're a bad person or, you know, like whatever it was. And there was like some good ones on there. Um, and then the next thing you know, the comments are muted because Kale and I were going to go and put our two cents on there. And yep, definitely tried. The, the comments were muted. And then the next thing I know, after I have been bashed in the media and been on the defense of things, giving accurate statements of what actually was, you know, going on in my truth, um, I won't even say my truth. I will say the truth because the it's facts truth. back yeah. up the truth. Yep. Um, then for Chase to go to People Magazine and to say that he loves his sister and he doesn't understand why he's doing that, at that point, my attorney then brings out the comments that he has um, receipts of that he had just previously made on Instagram days before that, that he only had one sister. So it's like, you know what? Pick a side and stay on it. So does he only have one brother then? He only has Grayson. He doesn't have... Kyle's not his brother then either because he wasn't in the family photo. Well, so then that leads me to my next thing. So then there was a photo posted of Kyle in a hospital bed on Instagram. And I had gone on Twitter and probably in bad taste um, had put something about how they were using it for sympathy. Um, because I, that's truly how I felt, and I will stand by that. Like, I do feel that way. So, I mean, looking um, at the picture, that's how I felt, and I don't even know them. So, I mean, I don't know. And, you know, people can say, well, Kale's only saying that because, you know, her and Lindsay run a podcast together. But if anybody listens to this podcast, you know that we disagree all the time, 99% of the time. So, 
<laughs> is it really that much? I mean, basically, we disagree on like everything. Like um, ninety-seven. I'll give it ninety-seven. Ninety-seven, fine. <laughs> um, but then the next thing I know, E News is running a cryptic tweet that I had posted, like saying that he was flexing a sympathy card. Um, and then you're getting like all of these comments of people saying, you know, like family, this family, that, but like, let's not forget what's been done to me in the media and what has literally wrecked my life for the past two and a half weeks. And I will gladly say that all of the people that were involved, um, that were accused basically from the statements that were made from the Chrisley camp, um, have stood by me. Um, my husband has stood by me because we know what the truth is and, um, we don't have secrets. So unfortunately for them, but fortunately for me, because I live an honest life, we have been able to, I won't say seamlessly, but we have been able to move on and get past the fuckery. Right. And, um, it doesn't take away the fact of the actual issue at hand, which is the legal issues. And those are none of my business, so I'm not going to speak on those. Right. Um, but they, that's what they need to be focused on and not merging into my lane. Well, I mean, just to your point, I think that it was very distasteful, some of the things. It was almost like... We're in trouble, so let's throw this and this and this and this at Lindsay and then take the heat off of us. But at the end of the day, the legal troubles are still there. So maybe don't do that because at the end of the day, you're going to be still facing jail time. So, Well, now you've just created a very pissed off person. And I'm not going to say like I'm their enemy or, you know, like whatever they want to make it out to be to like make it look a type of way. Um, I have nothing to do with your life and they have nothing to do with my life. Uh, Jackson hasn't seen my dad since 2017. So it's literally like two different lives and we share the same last name. And I'm also going to touch on that because the people that have gone on the defense for them are saying, well, if you're you know ashamed of them or if you're this or you're that, then change your last name. First of all, people let's said make that? one thing clear. Yeah, let's make one thing clear. We all went in this together. So nobody, it wasn't like my dad was like this A-list celebrity and then all of a sudden like we came out of the woodwork and we are benefiting off of this last name. Um, that wasn't the scenario at all. In fact, it took all of us to collectively sign the contract to start the reality show. So that was my born name and I plan to keep it. And if you don't like it, um, too bad, too fucking bad. (laughs) I mean, that goes for anybody, whether, I mean, that's like, Oh, well you don't, if someone were to come up to me and say, well, you never, you've only met your dad one time and you don't fuck with him. So you should change your last name. It's like, fuck off. This is what I was born with. And this is what I'm keeping. So mind your business. Well, and people say, oh, well, because you know, you're married or because you're this or because you're that part of me, it's a pride thing because I feel like I have been Lindsay Chrisley like my whole life. And yes, I am. Lindsay Campbell married. I'm Lindsay Chrisley Campbell. Um, but if I have successes, I don't know like what it is, but it's, it's like Lindsay Chrisley is me and I am her. Right. And like my successes should be associated with that. And like my failures should be associated with that. I, I definitely get what you're saying. I mean, I, I went through a period where I wanted to change my last name, but at that point I had already been on the show and I was like, I'm already Kale Lowry. Like people already know me as Kale Lowry. This is who I've been my whole life. So I guess it doesn't really make sense for me to turn around and change my last name. Like this is who I am. This is my brand. This is me outside of my family troubles and my family bullshit. You know what I mean? So I get it. I get what you're saying. So 
those were just like a few things that I just wanted to clarify. And obviously I'll be able to talk more, um, at a later date, but right now with the way that things are, and if you're reading, you'll realize why I can't go into details about certain things. Um, I just want to encourage you to go over to my Twitter, um, read the facts and then, um, I don't want to sway anybody's opinion. Like either no, way, like but- if you're, if you're, you know, pro whatever or you're this or you're indifferent, feel however you want to feel. That's perfectly fine. But just read the facts, um, watch how people operate. And I think that you'll be able to see a very clear picture um, once you do that. And I agree. A lot of people had, you know, I do, I did that question thing like before we recorded cause we were supposed to record and then I got sick and then I forget something else came up, but, um, who the hell gets like the flu in August? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm mean, from hell. I'm me and me is her or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's literally been the month from hell. But the second most commonly asked question from my, you know, family BS was about the Javi and Lauren drama. And I don't know like what you can share because obviously like I've had to be a little um, tight-lipped about certain things too. So whatever you can share, that's what people want to know. This The tea is hot on this episode of Coffee Combos because I completely <laughs> forgot about that bullshit until you just brought it up. <laughs> um, the amount of shit we've talked on this whole podcast today has been unreal. Um, you know what? I, I know pretty much the entire situation um, from start to finish because... I was called to the scene of the crime, and then I was later blamed as the problem. So um, I'm not going to get into all of the details. However, I will say that that was not a mess that I was planning to clean up. Um, It wasn't my mess. It didn't involve me, but somehow I got involved in it. And, um, you know... Ooh, I just, there's so many things I could say and there's a lot of directions I can go here. Um, I think no, I, ooh, I don't even know where to go with this. I saw the apology that Javi wrote on Instagram and I had actually encouraged him prior to that to make a statement because somebody leaked the story. Um, It was not me. I didn't do it. And I actually was very upset that I was blamed for it because the night that everything happened, um, I was called eight times in the middle of the night. So I'm thinking somebody died. And that was really upsetting. I couldn't sleep. I didn't know what to do. Um, and, And then I was later blamed for it. But it's like you... You can't do that. Trusted me enough to like call eight times. Right. In the middle of the night. But then also it's like there's a fine line like there we also can't be doing that. Like I like a cop called me also. So it was like a cop and then hobby too, but it was like we can't blur those lines. Like those lines cannot be blurred. You're we are both doing our own thing and I don't want to upset anyone you're in a relationship with. I don't want to upset anyone I'm in a relationship with. So like that was like if no one died, like you can't do that. Um but I understand there was like liquor involved and like other things. Um but I was very upset because I was blamed for the leak. And then, um, you know, I just, I didn't want any parts of it, but I, I feel like everyone was tagging me in Javi's apology. And, um, you know, I don't really, I don't have much to say about it. I feel like we all make decisions, um, whether they're good or bad. And we all have to either reap the benefits or we have to deal with the consequences. And I feel like, Hopefully this was a learning curve for everybody. I hope this was a mistake that he made that he will learn from moving forward. Um, but I don't I don't want to say too many details because it's not my place anymore. But I do hope that my son, Lincoln, and I do, even though I don't really know Eli, I hope that they are still getting both of 
I, I don't want to say both of their parents because I'm Lincoln's only mom, but I, I hope that the kids are taken care of and nothing is truly affecting them other than, you know, they're trying to co-parent or getting back together. I don't know. Um, so long story short, I have nothing to say. I'm, I never want to be involved in a mess like that again. And that's all. Well, First like, what do you all, even say like to we, that? What people were tagging me in it. And it was like, what are you tagging me for? Well, and then I was getting messages about it as if, like, I don't have enough, like, BS going on. <laughs> Honestly. Then I start getting these messages. I literally thought I was just going to, like, try to go down the freeway as fast as I could and fling my phone out. Yeah. Like, I, I really thought that because I was like, nothing else can happen. Like, Nothing else can freaking happen because there's so much shit going on. And I swear, like, it is so true. The saying, when it rains, it pours. Oh, I tweeted that the other day. It was literally, like, between you and your family stuff going on, the hobby drama I was bombarded with, I guess. And then all this shit last week, I was like, literally, I don't think that I've seen a worse two and a half weeks. Like, I truly haven't. I think it's going to go down in history of my life. But you know what? Like, it's it's really crazy though because I will say that there have been other less crazy things that have happened that have really put me in a dark place. But for whatever reason, and I don't know what it is, these last two and a half weeks, I have not been consumed by them, I guess. Like I keep I do see the light at the end of the tunnel. Like I do see it and I know that things are gonna get better. And that's very like different for me. And I hope that it's the same for you. Like I hope that you're seeing like things are gonna get better. Well, and I think a lot of people to have um, messaged me because I haven't like posted anything on Instagram, you know? And so right. mm-hmm. people are like wondering like where What's I'm at. And it's like obviously intentional that I'm not posting. Like I'm trying to really like take care of me and take care of like my house and what's going on like inside my four walls. And right. I can happily say that we're all on the same page and that's a good place to be. Yeah. Um, I feel like that I'm sad that the situation is what the situation is because no matter what, it's family, you know? And so that's unfortunate, but I have had to learn that if something's toxic, you have to remove it out of your life as right. hard as that may be. and it's not a revolving door and it's not an open invitation. And um, a lot of people that have toxic family relationships have sent in messages, you know, saying, um, you know, this has given me strength or this is, um, you know, open my eyes or, you know, whatever it may be. And I hope that somebody, even if it's one person that gets some type of benefit from the struggle that I'm currently going through, then it was 100% worth it. Um, But one thing that I will stand by is don't ever go out here and lie on me and I will not feel obligated to tell the truth about you. Honestly, though, that is the truest fucking statement. Yeah, no, and to your point, I just think like, because obviously I don't talk to my family either. Um, A message that I get all the time is like, oh, you should give them another chance. Oh, that's your mom. Oh, that's your dad. Oh, that's your so-and-so. And it's like toxic is toxic is toxic. So it doesn't matter who it is in your life. If they are toxic, you remove them. So just to add to what you were saying, I mean, yeah, I mean, and don't lie on somebody who who has the truth about you because honestly, at the end of the day, like that's going to come out. All the, oh, the truth always comes out. The truth always comes out. And that's Even why... on accident. And I, will, and I stand by that. Even if it's on accident and it comes out another way that doesn't involve you, it will come out. Like what is done in the dark always comes to light. So... um I just didn't think that legal issues and then things that happened through my separation went hand in hand and maybe I'm wrong. You know, like I just, I felt like those were two totally different things on two totally opposite ends of the spectrum that should have never merged. Um, But, you know, that's my opinion and people are free to, 
you know, have other opinions about it. Um, but wow, like I can't believe it's already been an hour. I know. That's so we had so much to talk about, and I'm sure we'll have so much more next week. I know. People are gonna be so upset that this isn't like <laughs> earlier. Um I know. people wanted it like this people wanted it this week. So Well, I'm sorry that we were sick and all life was happening at once, but um well y'all life happened and um i'm glad that y'all can be a part of it and some of you might not be happy to be a part of it but um because <laughs> i feel very stressed being a part of it um but the the stress is residing and i feel like i'm i'm starting to feel a little bit better so good um i think that's all we have time for this week. So if you guys have not subscribed to us, you can do that by searching the Purple Podcast app on your iPhone, type in Coffee Combos, click subscribe, click the fifth star and leave us a written review. We are also available now on Pandora as well. We hope you guys have a great week and we'll talk to you soon. See ya. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It.